Welcome to Vermontitude, a collaborative effort between Great Eastern Radio, the Brattleboro Reformer, and BCTV to bring you the stories behind the stories on the topics you want to learn more about. Because there's always more, so there'll always be Vermontitude. Hosted by me, Peter Fish Case. Welcome to Vermontitude. New episodes drop every Tuesday and can be found by going to vermontitude.com, reformer.com, or bctv. We come to you from the studios at the Innovation Box on Flat Street. I'm Peter Fish Case, and each week I cover the topics that are of concern to Wyndham County and the towns that reside within their borders. Today we're talking with Reformer reporter Chris Mays about flood markers, courageous conversations, and more. Welcome. Thank you. All right, man. Uh, let's drill into it right away. Let's uh, the flood markers in uh, in in Wilmington over in the Deerfield Valley. Now, I can tell you as a as a person who grew up over there. All right, watching the single flood marker uh, be there, and then going back after Irene and realizing that there's a new standard in town. What was the thinking behind the town not wanting to put them on? Well, or the town, I should say. Well, the town manager told me he hadn't really thought about it. They were sprucing up the town uh, hall. They were repainting it, doing a little bit of cleaning up on the outside. They were working on the sidewalk and everything. And a resident, the the woman who painted the lines originally, asked, hey, are these coming back? And he hadn't thought about it. He had been uh, approached by the Bytown Economic Development Committee about possibly doing some logos or, or murals there. And he hadn't really thought about it, so he didn't really commit to putting those lines back and then all of a sudden after that correspondence with the woman who painted the lines he was inundated with all these calls and emails and they had a select board meeting a special select board meeting where that was discussed as well as some other issues but um, a bunch of people came out and they wanted the lines back and then there was a petition with more than 600 signatures landed on the town manager's desk on Thursday when they had this small committee meeting to discuss what to do about the the, the markers. And then on Friday came the announcement that, hey, these things are coming back. Well, I mean, 600, and, and Wilmington is a small community. You know, it's not big. It's 2,500 people over there? Yeah, well, that's exactly what the guy who <laughs> who uh, put submitted the petition said. You know, this was a real <laughs> call for those to, to come back. Well, you know, I mean, it, it, it seems strange that it would even be up for conversation um, that uh, these lines shouldn't go back. I mean, it's such a historical part of the Deerfield Valley. I mean, I know that, you know, it's, it's tragic and it, tragedy and floods, but uh, to not to put them back for even that to be a conversation. I mean, you can see how, how sensitive people can, can, can get to things that have been there forever. Yeah, the, the town manager, he, he had come from Rutland, and they had seen some devastation, too. Yeah. So he wanted to tell people, you know, I'm sensitive to it. But he was thinking maybe we could focus on the future of the community and have these markers somewhere else, you know, maybe put pictures up in the town hall. But that wasn't really going to suffice. No, no. You know, I, uh, I can remember as a kid standing there and thinking the first flood line, I'd have been okay because it would have just been to like my chin. Uh, and then the next flood line, of course, would have finished me. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's just, it's just a real reminder of what the, sometimes the town's perseverance. Yeah. And I, I moved here um, the year after Tropical Storm Irene, and we were still covering so much of the fallout from that. Um, yeah. I was covering Wilmington primarily then, and there was there was just so much going on in terms of rebuilding and recovery and, you know, yeah. talking about resilience and yeah. figuring out how to move on after that big storm. No. Yeah. So, I, you know, having the marker in the downtown is uh, – is, is, is probably appropriate. So I'm, I'm glad that they chose to, to keep it down there. Moving on to, uh, as long as we're talking about things that people get sensitive about coming and going, uh, the mascot conversation is continuing. Yes. On June 13th, the school board is going to get a proposal for the new name. The, the proposed name is the Bears. Okay. Students voted on, on, on a few different names, and that was the one that came forward. Um, and yeah, we're going to see see what the if the school board supports it. So, do you get a sense um, from the student body um, that the removal of the name the Colonels 
um, is is a big deal. Do do you do you have a sense of that? I I honestly, uh, I mean, I, I I know where social media wants it. Uh, you know, and 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 some of the comments that have been made on social media and and the feelings there. But what about the actual student body right now? Um, you know, the school board meetings have been relatively quiet. Okay, I, I keep expecting you know people to be breaking down the doors and saying, "Hey, let's keep this," or "Hey, let's." And there really hasn't been that all of a big you know a big response to it at right. school board meetings. I know when they were taking submissions for names, they were told not to submit the kernels, and people were. So there are people who want it. I know. Okay. I just interviewed some exchange students, and one of them bought a shirt, a kernels uh, hoodie, and I guess you know part of that is probably, you know, people like the name, and yeah. she liked being at the school. Um, so. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. There are students who are enthusiastic about changing the name. There are. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, any, um, and, and I know you've probably seen some of the comments on, uh, on social media uh, with regards to, um, to, to the name change. Um, any level of, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with the way some people present their cases. I just want to be clear about that. Uh, but they are passionate about it. Or, or do you find have you have you seen anything like that coming like on a high school level? Um, I haven't directly. No, I I, I interviewed um, someone who graduated. I don't know, uh, ten years ago or so, mm -hmm. um, and he put together a petition when they were first discussing it in 2020, and now he wants to be part of the conversation again, and he wants them to try to keep it and. You know, he was deployed, and he he believes the colonels is a is just you know the name just refers to a military rank. Yeah, and um, yeah, so there you know there are people out there like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I, it, there's so much to unpack on that one. So uh, per, perhaps maybe in the upcoming episodes we can get somebody from the school board in on the show to to have that conversation with me and, and the thinking behind that. Um, Moving on, courageous conversations. Yeah, I, f I found this event, this um, speaker series they were hosting at the uh, New Fane Congregational Church to be really interesting. I haven't caught one yet, but I had a great conversation with the pastor there. And they're talking about these highly charged topics, you know, abortion, um, um, climate change, um, you know, gender, you know, gender issues and, and, and such. And they're doing it in the context of a church and they are um, an open and affirming church. They are a congregational church under right. the UCC. So they are a little bit more liberal, you know, but the idea is just to have these conversations, not only with people in the church, but out in the community and um, just, just talk about it in a respectful way. And one of the the goals is to have a place to talk about these things because, the, as the pastor told me, a lot, you know, places where these conversations could happen in a civil manner are sort of drying up. Yeah, I, yeah, I would, I would go. I, there's a step above drying up, or it's really difficult. So I'm always, I'm, I'm always a fan of sitting down, being able to have a civil conversation, and kind of working things out, being able to speak frankly in those conversations and, and not, um, not being insulted, not, you know, being, feeling like you're on the attack, feeling like you're, you're having a conversation about something and you're trying to get different view viewpoints. So it was a, it was a fascinating article. I've, I've been curious to learn uh, more, more about it. And I always, when people can get their voice heard, you know, that's what kind of empowers them. Yeah, they're and they're going to continue for the rest of the year. They committed to do doing it for the rest of the year, um, but I expect that they'll they'll have you know some kind of follow up um, in years to come because they've seen that it's been a great program. All right. Um, so you happen to be over in Westover when there was a big structure fire that broke out as a result of that last thunder and lightning storm. Yeah, it was it was pretty intense. I was going to pick up my girlfriend from from um, this bar, 
and we saw all these fire engines going and I said, oh, I, I don't know what's going on. And then we started driving away and I could see from Dover Road, you know, the road that goes through yeah. 30 flames coming out. So we turned around and I went over there and being the dutiful reporter that you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Our photographer who tends to cover these yeah. um, fires, he texted me and said, um, apparently there's a fire in Westover. And I said, actually, I'm there. And he, he was pretty happy yeah. about that. Yeah. He didn't have to leave his house. Yeah. Um, so it was complete loss. How? Um, um, I believe so. I think that's what they were expecting. Yeah. Um, there, there was nobody home at the time. A neighbor called it in, and the neighbor believed it was lightning. And a I lightning talked, strike, yeah. I heard some of the officials talking, and they seemed to agree. All right. Um, let's talk about the exchange student who um, is, that we, we were saying, is doing an illustrating project. Yes, uh, she's from Armenia, and she is um, very interested in arts, and she wants to do illustration in the future. And so part of um, this independent study program she participated in at Brattleboro Union High School uh, allowed her to work with a local author who created a children's story about a little girl who was looking for a moose but couldn't find one. And it's all, a, you know, all about her story. And the author herself is um, a person who goes out looking for moose often. will go on trips just to, you know, look for moose all right. up in the White Mountains and, and, and other places. There was a, like a, a moose out in, uh, in like North Brattleboro last week that just, just gone and looked there. Yeah, there was one in, <laughs> behind Agway, I believe, yeah, yeah. and then the West River Park. Right? Yeah, there was pictures of it popping up all over the place and video of it, which is uh, which is always fun. So, um, so is she's currently working on this project now. Yes, it's it's almost completed, and then it will be up for sale um, on uh, Google. I think that's what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're gonna self publish it. All right. I looked at the draft yesterday. That she just has a couple more photos to do, but the story's all written and it's all laid out, so it's all right. It's almost ready to go. Fun, fun yeah. stuff. Um, finally, uh, you and I had uh, the opportunity to um, do the uh, the. It's a soiree now. The chamber soiree. Yeah, is that what we called it. Um, and uh, I, the, for, first off, I, I I like the format of this one a lot more better than. Uh, a lot more better. That's that's really horrible English. A lot better than uh, like the sort of the sit down formal dinner or breakfast thing. It was just a lot more free flowing, a lot of fun. But some folks got uh, some uh, some de uh, nice designations. Yeah, I liked I liked the format too. Um, I liked the hash browns and uh, at, at at the retreat, but this was fun too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we now know what's important to Chris Mays. Oh, it's, Jackie it's a, it, made some it, great vegan she, sliders. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep. No, she did. She did uh, the uh, the uh, hangry traveler. Yeah. Uh, catered the whole event, and that was good. Um, it was uh, as long as we're talking about food. Uh, t Tito Garza. <laughs> yeah. Finally, entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneur you know, we, of the I, year. I know we've been. Uh, I've been in that guy's corner for a while. He worked so hard and uh, well deserved. Yeah, yeah, his story is amazing, starting yeah. with a cooler on the side of the road yeah. to a food trailer to brick and mortar, and now a few brick and mortar locations. Yeah, and now expanding to uh, the Mananoc region. Yeah. Uh, so that 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 was good. Um, what, what else do we have? Um, Mary Giamartino, yep. owner of the Hotel Pharmacy, which had to close its doors this year. Mm -hmm. um, she was um, chamber, what was it, member of the year? Member of the year, I believe, yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, Dan Yates. Dan Yates. It's yeah, good to see him back. Hey, you know, he's uh, he's had some uh, some health issues, um, uh, and he looked amazing uh, and well deserved. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So that was good. And then, uh, of course, the other awards are just you know years in business. Um, those were fun uh, to see. Um, fire arts and um, the uh, uh, Vermont Hempicurian uh, was in there. Um, Terry Martin and his organization were in there. Yeah. Um, I, I know I'm missing somebody, a few other people, I think, and I apologize. But uh, oh, the um, uh, Montessori School. Yeah. Also, also in there. Uh, so yeah, no, that was a it was a great event and a fun event to attend. Yeah, it's it's really. Um it's remarkable to see the contribution some people make to this community, that dedication. It yeah. was really on display. Yeah, it really was. 
Um, anything else we're working on here or uh, that we can talk about? Yeah. Um, lots going on. Um, we got the select board meeting this week. I've never heard of it. Yeah, uh, I think we get a we get a little break from the EMS stuff this week, right? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got uh, we got some things coming up. Uh, Chris Mays, thank you. I know we uh, we called on you last minute here. We had a guest cancellation, so I appreciate you filling in. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, man.